Look at all these. How many do you think this is? I'll tell you at the end of the video. I made all of these in today's video. Let's see if I can show you some of it. With no stamps. I made it with one single tool that only cost seven bucks. And this is it. You actually get four of these in a pack for $7, stamping foam. They're three inches by four and a quarter. And I do like that you get four. Let me tell you about this. Now this has been around. I remember when it came out and thinking, whatever, I remember grabbing it and it's been sitting in a drawer since its release. And I was crazy not to give this a try. So all you do is you apply your heat gun to it for about five to 10 seconds. This is the Ranger Heat It tool. Uh, any heat tool I'm sure will work. And then you take whatever you want to use to get your impression. This is actually a produce sack. My avocados came in this, so I just removed the avocados and I'm gonna use this for a demonstration. So again, you just heat the side up for five to 10 seconds. It doesn't change in appearance, so just kind of count in your, in your mind to 10 seconds. And then press whatever you're using into the block or you can press the block into whatever you're using. I'm gonna use a couple different things through this video to show you. Uh, but that's it, and it leaves this gorgeous impression those impressions that will stay there until you add heat to it there is nothing that's going to remove that impression until heat i even cleaned off the block and you can clean the block with water or i have a stamp cleaner from brutus monroe i use that as well and uh, the impression still stays there so that impression is locked in place until you add heat to it so i think that's pretty cool so let's do some designs this is a placemat this is literally what i eat off of when i'm sitting at the dining room table i'm going to go ahead and heat that up again five to ten seconds and then i'm going to press that into that middle area whatever you see that has texture that's cool you can do you can even take the block and go press it against the wall or something if you have textured walls doesn't matter you just heat it up but you have to move quickly after you heat it you got to pretty much make that impression within a few seconds i think it's so cool what do you do with these impressions what can you add to them well of course you can add ink and i it's double-sided so you get four in a pack so really you have eight impressions you can make and you can even do the side if you want to the side of the of the block as well so i just went ahead and swinked on some ink color just easy peasy and look at that that is my placemat my placemat so don't use permanent inks no archival inks because that's not going to come up when you clean it up because it's archival ink those aren't made to come up so uh you can get dual prints like ghost prints if you will that's one benefit of it another benefit is it's kind of like the sky's the limit with this and all of the backgrounds i'm going to make i am not using one single stamp not one so there i swinked on some ink i took an impression and then i sprayed it with water one spritz took an impression and then i get basically what's called a ghost print you can add multicolor inks really the sky's the limit and if you just kind of just dart your eyes around the room um i see some impressions on a chair i could go and take a, a print of um, a candle as I'm scanning through the room. I mean, really the sky's the limit. So I made all these backgrounds with an ink pad and my placemat and this foam block. Pretty cool, I think. So what else can you do? What other uh, mediums, I guess, per se, can you use on this block? Well, let's figure it out. I still have Nouveau paste. Those are really the last of my paste that I kept in my stash. Um, so I'm gonna see if this works. So I went ahead and just put this directly on the block. I was risking it here. I didn't know if I was gonna be able to get this off or not, but hey, that's what I'm here for. Let's try it out and see what works and see what doesn't. So because these pastes work on dark cardstock, this was the perfect opportunity. So I thought I would press the paper into the image this time, into the impression, I guess I should say, I'm giving it a good, good press. I wanna make sure all that paste transfers. Then I'm gonna do it again. This time I'm pressing, I'm putting all my weight. I'm getting a calf workout that time. Oh, this is so cool. I think I got three impressions from this one. I did do a little spritz on that final one, just one spritz. None of the cardstock I'm using is watercolor cardstock, by the way. This is just regular black and white cardstock. So uh, I put the foam and the little spatula thing in a bucket of water until I have time to go to the sink. Uh, I do not want any of this drying on my tools and you'll be happy to know that it rinsed right off probably because I didn't let it dry on the block. So keep that in mind if you do decide to use pastes. But this is pretty cool. Now, if you stamp straight, you can use this as your card panel, or if you stamp crooked, like I sometimes do, 
uh, you can just cut it off with your trimmer. Now, don't forget about your pet prints. There's no video footage of me actually pressing my uh, dog's paw into the image because she was like, what are you doing? But this is a great opportunity to do pet prints and even hand prints. Got to do small hands, though, like little kid prints. My daughter's nine and her hand was too big. But hello, prints without putting ink and nasty stuff all over their feet or without making a stepping stone and putting their, their paw prints in like cement or whatever it is. <laughs> This is a fake flower, by the way. You can do it with real flowers too, but I have these fake flowers for when I do photo staging. So I'm going to try it this way, and I actually did an impression, and I didn't like it. And so no problem. You just heat it up until the design goes away. Look at that. It's like magic. And then I did it again. So if you don't get a per perfect impression the first time, just give it a whirl. Just heat it up again. And this one, by the way, this block, I love it. It's my absolute favorite. I had a little divot up there in the top. I just kind of took my heat gun and kind of smoothed that out with the heat. Uh, but this one is my absolute favorite. This one block. It's actually sitting on my desk. I didn't heat it to remove the image. I love it. So let's try sprays. If you have any sprays in your stash, these are distressed spray stains. You can also use oxides or any kind of, you know, water-based sprays. Again, nothing permanent or you're going to permanently stain your block. <laughs> I made it funny, not really. Uh, so this time I just sprayed it. I misted it with a little bit of water and just regular cardstock. I just pressed right into it. That's a nice deep impression. So between each print of the sprays, I do give it a little spritz one time just to move those sprays around. Again, this is regular cardstock. This is not watercolored cardstock. Um, and look at those. That's pretty neat. So again, I'm going to do a couple spritzes. I'm going to see how many prints I can get from this. So this will be my third print here. Pressing it harder and harder each time. Ooh, I love that one. Oh, I love that. So now it's like all the paint that's left over is in the crevices of that, of that block. I just love it. So these are pretty cool. I'm digging it. So while I'm cleaning up, let me talk about this real quick. You guys remember when I talked to you about this flexi spot rising desk? It goes up and down and sits, and I had it in my craft room, right? Well, I also got this really cool chair that is also by FlexiSpot. It's an ergonomic chair and it has a headrest. And I asked my husband to put the headrest on and then the next thing I knew, my desk and the chair has been moved to his office. Allow him to explain. Why did you steal my desk? Well, I mean, I needed a work desk and I like the versatility of, uh, you know, being able to sit This is my the, desk. But you said I could use it. Use it, not take it. Well, find your keepers. How do you like the chair? pretty comfortable. Is that what made you steal the whole thing once the chair came in? You took the whole package? This chair is kind of dangerous because I'm supposed to be working, but I can fall asleep pretty easily. You're a thief. Anyway, I'll get my desk and chair back. And I also have this power strip with USB. It's really cool. I just need to have a hole drilled in the desk and then it sets in there and then all the cords and all the crap is hidden. Uh, so you don't even see that. And now I'm wondering if I can get a rolling uh, filing system underneath the desk. I'm going to look into that. But hey, I've got a discount code for you in the description below. So be sure to check that out uh, for the desk, for the chair, for whatever. And uh, thanks so much for sponsoring FlexiSpot. I'll get my chair back and desk, don't you worry. All right, acrylic paint is something else you can use on these foam blocks. I've had a couple people say, hey, I don't have ink pads, but I do have paint. Well, here's something you can use your paint with. So I'm just doing two different colors. I didn't know how much to use. I am literally, this is the first time I've tried these blocks. This is the first time I'm trying each of these mediums. So I went a little heavy handed on the red, not to worry. I'll just add a little bit more yellow. And I do have a, a jar of water off to the side to put my paintbrush in. And uh, anyway, so here we go. Let's see what happens. Here's the first print I'm gonna take. So this is gonna be a very, very deeply saturated print there. It actually stuck to the block. <laughs> and that is so cool, but I'm gonna keep going. And again, between each print, I am going to spritz it with a little bit of water and not to beat a dead horse, but this is regular cardstock. Uh, this time I did two spritzes of water and I'm just gonna keep taking prints. And I, did, I had in my mind that I was gonna, gonna take prints until no more paint came up. And that's what I basically did here. I mean, in about 30 seconds, you can get like eight to nine backgrounds. I mean, it's insane. And I love this image. I don't know, sometimes it reminds me of like a bird sitting in branches. Sometimes it reminds me of berries. Like it's just, it's, it's just cool. I don't know what else to say about it, but I made all of these prints. Just, I could have kept going by the way, but I stopped because I figured y'all wanted to see something else, but this was so cool. So just pick two colors of paint that won't, if they mix together, they're not gonna turn into mud. Consult your color wheel if you need to. All right, so this is actually an art piece that I did a long time ago. 
I did some dripping and there's actually paper triangles that I mod podged on there. So there's a lot of texture there. So look around and see if you have any textured pieces that you can use. Textured frames, textured if you make your own art, whatever, I don't know. Um, but just press it into there. I'm, I, I tried to find a part that was really textured. Because that is like a canvas board, it's very flimsy in the back. So that particular side didn't come out as great as I wanted to. So I'm gonna press up there at the top where there's a little bit more of a backing and that's a lot better. So I think the more, the more uh, peaks and valleys you have when you take your impression, the better off you're gonna get. So here I just really heavy handedly uh, inked up the block and then I spritzed on some spray stain it looks like and I'm just it looks like a bloody mess doesn't it that don't does not look that pretty but anyway uh so I'm going to press it on here and see what we have here so press 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 and that's pretty cool but I didn't get a lot of those triangles I really wanted a lot of those triangles to come through which is why I said try to get as much texture as you can uh, so I'm like meh that's okay so then I decided to go very lightly with a dark color very lightly with my ink pad uh, so hopefully this is going to pick up a lot of those triangles and voila, wait till you see. Just, I mean, it's amazing. Just using a very light hand really gave me all of the texture there. And again, I just clean it off and here's the three prints I took from there. And again, your, your image will stay there until you add heat to it. So don't worry about that. All right. So again, let's try an embossing folder. Stencils will work the exact same way. Just heat up the side that you want to, you know, pick up the print from or the impression from. I don't know what the technical term is. I'm going to do both sides of the block. So this is a 3D embossing folder. I know a lot of people don't have those, but that's all I have in my stash. So just, you know, I'm, that's why I'm showing you both sides. So if you didn't have a 3D embossing folder, obviously you would only get one, one impression from it but anyway i did both sides i don't know i think that's a dotted embossing folder then i'm just going to take some ink pad and just press it onto that's a really nice and juicy ink pad there press it onto the embossing folders and then here's where the time comes heat it up five to ten seconds by now you know the drill and you just whatever's comfortable to you whether you press the block into the the thing you're taking a print from or you take the thing you're taking a print from and press it into the block I don't know why that was so hard for me to say. But anyway, here you go. So now I've got both sides. And at first I took a piece of scratch paper to keep my hands clean, but then I realized I really should be taking a piece of cardstock to get a print. So that's the print and that's the print. And that one I love when it dries, you'll see in just a second. And then that top one, I went to see if I could get another print out of it, but it didn't really come out. I don't think I pressed too hard, but regardless, here they all are. And then I rinsed that block off in the water. And here's the three prints. The top two, of course, are my favorite. That top one, left one looks like a galaxy. I think it's really cool. All right, I did want to show you powders. Now, here's the texture from those avocado sack, that vegetable sack from the very beginning of the video. I wanted to see if I could use powders because I know a lot of people have various powders in their stash. They were a little hard to work with. These, are, these powders are usually so incredibly pigmented. So I started off adding a very little bit and then adding water and there wasn't a lot there so then I added water and then started adding more powder <laughs> and I'm just trying to move it around um, the one on the on the right there it's it's forming into something that could be cool the one on the left I just made it a big hot mess uh, but again you have to be so careful because these powders are usually incredibly pigmented with more than just one color uh, it could turn into a hot mess but hi, it's me, it's what I do. So I continue to play with it and I did get a couple of really cool prints. They're not included in all the ones that I showed at the beginning of the video because I think this would have definitely benefited from watercolored cardstock. So I did not add heat to this block so I could do this again on watercolored cardstock. There's definitely some potential with your powders and the foam, but if you do use powders in the foam block, use watercolor cardstock. So anyway, just think of all the stuff around your house. So I'm using in the video today, the vegetable sack. What did I use? A face mat, some fake flowers, paw prints. I, this candle, I'm totally going to try to print this candle. Uh, so there's a lot of stuff. You just got to make sure that you heat your block up for five to 10 seconds and take it immediately to whatever the impression is you're trying to pick up. Um, but how many backgrounds do you think I made? If you guessed close to 26, then that's it. I made 26 backgrounds here that I can cut down, die cut, there's a lot I can do with all these backgrounds and maybe I should do a video focusing just on backgrounds and what to do with them all. I know that's been a request. 
So the $7 tool, it really impressed me and it's hard to impress me, I do have to say. Thanks for joining me. Can you think of anything else I can use with these blocks to get impressions on? Let me know. Let me know you want to, what you want to see in future videos and I'll see you again next time.